So this IMF, you know, they, I want to, this is my explanation, you are many like this, this is my increment, mm. because of the IMF, mm. uh, 5,000, you see, but if I have to tell you, at least the government is very good, yes, very good, it can be that, it is 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 that, but if I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to talk about it, and you know, this is too much, you know, how can the poor market here, how can the poor youth, what I mean, let's say, after 1,000 a month, I'll be able to get my money, on the other hand, Golden Party of Zambia GPZ leader Jackson Silavue has termed the increment a corporate madness, claiming that Zambians have jumped from a flying pan into the fire by voting in the United Party for National Development UPND led government. It is, it is sensitive and reckless to the people of Zambia. 65% of Zambians are living in extreme poverty. 5 million Zambians are unemployed. 900,000 Zambians are in the formal sector, employed in the formal sector. 2 million plus are in the informal sector. The cost of living in the country, it is too high. The cost of doing business in this country, it is too high. Numbers of obligations when one misses a remittance, the penalties are exorbitant. Where are we going in this country? President Agaende Ichilema must apply the brakes. We need a government in this country that has got a human face, a human face that cares for the people of Zambia. The moves that we have seen by the New Dawn government simply shows they do not care about the people of Zambia. However, commenting on the development, the Esco Senior Corporate Affairs Manager, John Kunda, says the adjustment in fees is not an increment. History. Mm -hmm. So what has been happening over the past years is that the Esco would come to your place and assess uh, your, your area and your need. Once they've established your need, they will come up with a true cost of uh, your connection. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I went to Mavuto's place, then we assessed. Uh, what materials, uh, what is required, and then we issue a quotation for Mr. Mavuto. But before we issue the quotation, put it into the system, mm -hmm. which was predefined, and it had uh, factored in some level of, um, you know, of some subsidy, what you call deflation. So uh, when we put in 10,000 kwacha, it's going to reduce it by 70%. Mm -hmm. And that's what we would charge the customer. Right? So what we have decided is that, look, this is not sustainable and it has not been helping the company. Okay. So customers must be given the true uh, value of the assessment. Dr. Kunda says the said prices are average as every job will be assessed and the price determined by materials required. Electricity, for, for your purchase of units, mm -hmm. there is no increment whatsoever. All right. Nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. So there is no increment. Right. Oh, right. But this is just affecting new connections. Okay. Because uh, this is not a new thing. It was already in the system. Right. But uh, we used to deflate it. All right. But we're saying, look, the reason we have the backlog is because of that deflation. Yes. And it's not helping because customers have to wait for two years. Yes. One year, three years for a connection. So let someone give us the capital contribution that is reflective of market forces okay. and immediately connect them within 30 days. For Movie TV News, I'm Afia Skaptula in Lusaka. Wife of former Lusaka Province Minister Boman Lusambo, Nancy, has been arrested and charged for being in possession of properties reasonably suspected to be proceeds of crime. The properties are believed to be worth 378,000 United States dollars. ACC spokesperson Queen Chiwe says 37-year-old Nancy of Chamba Valley area in Lusaka has since been released on bond. She said Mrs. Lusambo will appear in court soon. This comes barely a month after the commission arrested and charged Kawushi member of parliament with various offenses. The anti-corruption commission has charged and arrested the wife of former Lusaka Province Minister Paul Lusambo for being in possession of property reasonably suspected to be persons of crime 
worth 378,000 US dollars. Mrs. Musambo, age 37, Chamba Bali in Osaka, has been charged with four counts of possession of property, which only been suspected to be proceeds of the crime, contrary to section 71, subsection 1 of the forfeiture of proceeds of crime act, number 19 of 2010. Details of the four counts are that the letter known between 1st May 2015 and the 1st December 2021 at Chongwe District of Osaka Province of the Republic of Zambia, whilst acting together with other persons and known, Mrs. Musambo did purchase properties, namely property number HT, T3C, house number 248, property number HT, T3B, house number 249, property number HT, T4A, house number 282, and property number HT, T5B, house number 357, and the Silver Gardens in Chongo. The above properties with 378,000, of which she allegedly paid US dollars 193,219, are all reasonably suspected in the process of crime. The arrest of Mrs. Sample follows that of the husband, Mr. Sample, in January this year. The commission arrested Mr. Sample for consumption of property reasonably suspected to the process of crime, which he allegedly to have concealed in the wife's name. The commission charged Mr. Sample two counts of corrupt acquisition of two properties situated in Nola. Mrs. Sample has since been released on bond and will appear in court soon. Assist Jerome Kanika has once again blown the lead, open revealing that Winulunga District is among the beneficiaries of the recently dispatched controversial honeybee drug consignment by the Zambia Medicines and Medical Supplies Agency, ZAMSA. Mr. Kanika, the whistleblower in the 17 million United States dollars Ministry of Health and Honeybee Pharmacy Corruption scandal, warns such developments have the potential to erode public confidence. He adds government should immediately punish the parties involved in supplying medications that have been recorded. Mr. Kanika has also challenged ZAMSA to come out clean on the number of hospitals that received the said paracetamol 500, mi mi 500 milligrams and 100 milligrams. This comes in light of an apology by ZAMSA following its dispatch of the honeybee consignment to Kawe and Kasama General Hospital claiming it was purely an error. distributed defective drugs to health centers in Wankasama, a situation it termed as an error. The action had by the new board of directors, which was appointed barely 24 hours ago by Health Minister Suvia Masebo. The board comprises seven members, which will be chaired by Anna Chifungula, a private citizen with a background in finance. In addition to dissolving the management, Professor Mwamba has been appointed as interim director general, while a full audit will be conducted on the agency. The Drug Enforcement Commission says its Money Laundering Investigations Unit in 2021 investigated 219 money laundering related cases involving over 1 billion kwacha, over 54 million dollars and 23,000 euros. From the 219 cases that were recorded, 56 persons were arrested countrywide compared to 120 persons that were arrested in 2020 involving over 200 million kwacha and over $300 million, with over $25 million British pound. Commission Public Relations Officer Matthias Kamanga says the reports on different predicate officers to money laundering came from the public and private sectors, where 116 cases involved virus frauds, 51 cases were for theft or embezzlement, and 45 cases came from other types of predicate offences. Mr. Kamanga further says the Commission conducted a total of 764 cumulative cases in 2021, which led to the arrest of five persons in, in 39 cases for money laundering related cases involving 37 million kwacha. Outbreak of COVID-19, the Drug Enforcement Commission saw an increase of 68% of people sensitized on drug abuse and money laundering compared to the people sensitized in 2020.
is on different predicate offenses to money laundering came from public and private sector. The report indicates that there is a drop of 2% of money laundering cases compared to 2020 cases. The commission emerged in activities such as sensitization, counseling, family and parenting training skills and peer education, which helped in the reduction of cases. In 2020, the cases involved over 200 million uh, kwacha and over 3 million US dollars and over 25 million, uh, 25 million British pounds. But further, 92 cases were reported from January to July before the 2021 general elections, whilst we had an influx of cases that were being reported immediately after the elections. And so 127 cases were reported by members of the public during the, that period. In relation to drug offences, the Commission in 2021 arrested a total of 3,893 persons, comprising of 3,624 males and 259 females. As compared to 2021, 4,336 persons were arrested. Juvenile accounted for 267, where foreign nationals were 85. From, 100 and, uh, from 1,476 awareness activities, compared to uh, the year 2020, where 129,085 people were sensitized from 1,077 activities that were conducted, indicating a 68% increase in the number of people that were sensitized. Now this is, uh, of course, outside the various uh, mass communication activities that we held, where we were on TVs, and radios where it is uh, not possible really to quantify the number of people that you are reaching using those, uh, those um, uh, forms of media. Other activities that were conducted focused on stakeholder capacity development and covered family and parenting skills uh, trainings, peer education, drug use epidemiology uh, trainings where a total of 598 parents guardians, caregivers, and peer, uh, uh, peer educators were trained. Tessila Zulu, report from TV News in Osaka. Katete Council Chairperson Fanuel Chama has bemoaned the lack of learners for pupils district. Mr. Chama says it is important that learners are quickly provided with adequate materials in order to deliver quality education. He says it is important that constituency development funds are distributed in time to ensure the smooth delivery of free education. to have adequate materials in order to deliver quality education. His secondary school where pupils have ICT classes without a computer. Uh, where I'm coming from in Katete, there's, there are some uh, schools, uh, uh, day schools, which they don't have even a computer, but there's some computer lessons. Like if you go to Mzime, it is one up to nine, and they've got a class a class, uh, a class for computer day lessons, but they don't have even a computer. And when it comes to, to for, for exams, I don't think so that those children they will, they will perform very well. So it is my appeal to the government to look into these things so that our children can have better and quality education system in Zambia. Though thanking government for the introduction of free education, Chama says it is important that constituency development funds are distributed in time to ensure the smooth delivery of free education. What is good we always appreciate, what is bad we always condemn. As they are being in opposition, we always want to, to have a different uh, politics where we actuate on issues which are based and where people have done good, we need to appreciate them. And the people that have appreciated for the free education, the challenge becomes fine that uh, these schools, because they are not all uh, prepared or they are not so empowered, you find that in the in the one class, you find a normal classroom should be 35 to 40, 
but you find a classroom it uh, holds children to 85 70 which becomes difficult for a teacher to monitor the children so i feel as this as this new dawn government have planned for this they need also to empower schools heavily so that infrastructure uh, desk and other facilities so that the children they can have quite education meanwhile the council chairperson has lamented of kadarism and lawlessness in his district katete in my district kadarism is there and these people they are threatening people you know the people they are people they don't have a freedom of uh, uh, expression they don't have uh, uh, freedom of uh, doing their usual business uh, for that it will paint a bad picture to the to the new dawn government virginia chilongo movie tv news Pharmacist Jerome Kanika has once again blown the lead, open revealing that Munilunga District is among the beneficiaries of the recently dispatched controversial honeybee drug consignment by the Zambia Medicines and Medical Supplies Agency, SAMSA. Mr. Kanika, the whistleblower in the 17 million United States dollars Ministry of Health and Honeybee Pharmacy Corruption scandal warns that such developments have the potential to erode public confidence whistleblower has yet again dropped another missile. This time, it's clarity that actually Munilunga District Hospital also received the honeybee paracetamol 500 mg and 100 mg. Pharmaceutical expert Jerome Kanika said this when he featured on Movie TV Tuesday, 10th February 2022 edition of the Sunrise Breakfast Show. Because, uh, that's one thing that you need to worry to say. How can the drugs move 800 kilometers without anyone noticing? Is it? So it sounds very much unacceptable. And moreover, we are hearing that also the same drugs are in Mwenyunga. We are hearing that the same drugs are also in Mwenyunga. So I don't wow. know why Zamsa didn't mention about Mwenyunga. We That's need to know, they need now. to tell us. Meanwhile, the Zambia Medicine and Medical Supplies Agency, Zamsa, in a media statement firmed that the distribution of the honeybee paracetamol 500 mg and 100 mg, while acknowledging that only two health facilities, namely the Kawa General Hospital and Kasama General Hospital, received the said drugs. It should be made clear that the apology later in statement came after a public were related by a newspaper. Many Zambians have questioned the integrity, moral and ethical standard of staff and management of Zamsa. As honeybee medicines were mid-2021 found unfit for human consumption, the similar if not the same drugs thought quality test. From the first honeybee scandal, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health have always clarified that the dispatch was an error. One wonders if both technocrats at Zamsa and at Ministry of Health do really swear to preserve the lives of the consumers, in this case, the Zambian people. It is for this reason that many have advised the new minister to institute a board so that an overhaul could be done. But like all her predecessors, Mrs. Masebo, who is currently the Minister of Health, has remained silent on the matter. A situation which has left many wondering what bond is between the honeybee supplier and government. Many have wondered why management at Zamsa has not been fired or reshuffled. For now, it can be very safe to say the lives of the Zambian people are not in safe hand. As learned colleagues say, once is a mistake, repeated twice is no longer a mistake. Liambela Mutumba, Movie TV News in Lusaka. Meanwhile, the entire management of the Zambia Medicines and Medical Supplies Agency, ZAMSA, has been placed on forced leave. This action barely comes a week after the institution redistributed defective drugs to health centers in Kabo and Kasama, a situation it termed as an error. The action has been enforced by the new board of directors, which was appointed barely 24 hours ago by Health Minister Sylvia Masewo. The board comprises seven members, which will be chaired by Anna Chifungula, a private citizen with a background in finance in addition to dissolving the management professor mwamba has been appointed as interim director general while a full audit will be conducted on the agency in view of what has happened in the recent past the board has with immediate effect resolved to one place the entire zamsa management team on forced leave 
pending investigations of some of the serious anomalies at the agency, including the, the distribution of defective medicines supplied by honeybee farmers. The Zambian people are by expectations of the board and look forward to restoration of confidence in the supply chain of medicines and uh, medical supplies. I have no doubt that the men and women that have been appointed <coughs> into these boards have vast experience in the public service. I'm convinced that you are all equal to the task and we ensure that Zambians are assured of an efficient and an effective supply chain system and will have access to safe medicine and medical supplies in our facilities. We need to change the narrative of Zamsa because the current nar narrative is an embarrassment to the state and uh, an apology is not sufficient enough. We have to act and we have to act quickly. I'm confident that you will all hit the ground running and begin to put our house at NAPSA in order. We are sure of my utmost support and I wish you success in this mammoth task. We'll be back with more news. Stay tuned to the prime time news this evening. give you the world. Oh, <laughs> you already have. Travel to and from South Africa with Luan Air as we offer 20% off discount for flights. Sales period between 25th January to 28th February. Buy your tickets now. Luan Air. Fly the dream of Africa. The Zambia Statistics Agency will this year conduct the census across the country. The census aims to count people in households, rural and urban, hospitals, military, police and correctional facilities. This numbering will extend to hotels, farms, as well as high density areas with different families sharing a house and those in transitory locations. Every person in the country matters and should be counted because the census will benefit all from migrants, refugees and street children, homeless people, the young and the old people, as well as persons with disabilities. Everyone counts. This message is brought to you by the Zambia Statistics Agency. Welcome back. We continue with the news. President Haga in the Ijlema is expected to attend the 60th European Union African Union Summit from 17th to 18th February 2022 in Brussels, Belgium. Minister of Foreign Affairs Stanley Kakubo says President Hijlama will be among the heads of state and government from Africa and Europe expected to deliberate on finance, health, systems and vaccine production, agriculture and sustainable development, peace, security and governance and private sector support as well as economic integration. Mr. Kakuo says in a statement in Lusaka, President Hijinama's 
Congress participation in the summit is vital as it will avail the head of state a platform to share ideas and market the country. The EU-AU summit, which is held every four years, has been combined under the theme Africa and Europe, two continents with a joint vision for 2030. The summit will provide an opportunity to deepen partnership and greater cooperation to ensure prosperity for mutual benefit. Mr. Kakuo said President Hichilama is also expected to hold meetings on the sidelines of the summit with European Council President Charles Michael Michel, rather, High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph borrell Fontelles, European Investment Bank President, Wona Hoyen, Commission Vice President and other high-level officials. Mr. Kakuo further announced President Hichilama will also travel to the Vatican City after the EU-AU summit to meet with Pope Francis on Saturday, 19th February 2022. The Minister of Foreign Affairs notes that the Catholic Church has been instrumental in advocating for social economic development and continues to make distinctive contributions in the country's development through service provision in health, education and humanitarian affairs. Mr. Kakuo said President Hijinama's administration remains committed to promoting the country's image abroad as an attractive destination for investment. The minister said President Hijinama's presence at the summit in Brussels and his visit to the Vatican are essential in advancing the country's ambitious and inclusive developmental agenda. Zambia Congress Trade Union Secretary General Kosmas Mukuka says ZESCO should not be a breeding ground for political mileage where its resources are abused with impunity. Mr. Mukuka says there should be a reduction in political influence on the electricity supply company ZESCO and that it should be allowed to operate professionally. He says speaking at the at the Conference for National Energy Sector and Allied Workers Union in Livingston, South, Southern Province. At the same event, Human Capital and Development Director Mark Hosaya has emphasized on the need to have workers' education and stop the marginalizing of workers. Congress Trade Union Secretary General Cosmas Mukuka has cautioned politicians from the ruling party from using ZESCO as a cash cow for political activities. Mr. Mkuka, who was speaking when he officiated the ongoing National Energy Sector and Allied Workers Union Conference in Livingston, has noted with sadness at the manner in which state institutions were abused with impunity. It's also important that there should be reduced political influence on electricity supply companies, SESCO in particular, and allow it to operate professionally. And I'm a happy director for you. You have hit the ground running to pronounce yourselves to what the future will be like for ZESCO in terms of human resource and other issues to do with the enhancing capacity of ZESCO. There have been cases of overstaffing due to political influence on the company and that the company has been operating on top heavy structure in terms of staffing. He observes that reports have it that there have been cases of overstaffing at Zesco due to political influence of the company and that the company has been operating on a top heavy structure in terms of overstaffing, a situation which can now be avoided by the UPND government. Past regimes have used Zesco as a cash cow of finance political to finance political programs, including campaigns and other things we have heard, if it's true, that with the new management should stop. This was certainly and unfortunate because power generation capacity was adversely affected due to low level of investment. Nassau President Geoffrey Mbewe says the union will do everything within its power to protect unionized workers. In the last four years, get to government director, we have been fighting for workers' rights. We have been fighting to improve workers' movement, which are salaries and better conditions of service. We hope and pray that as we meet on that bargaining table, under the leadership and the challenge, we are going to achieve better than we have achieved. And Zesco Director Human Capital and Development Max Osaya noted the need for increased worker education on conditions of services. I noted that uh, that's one assignment 
that we need to work together as partners on workers' education. Employees need to know their conditions of service. Employees need to know their collective agreement in and out. Employees need to know their grievance procedures. The Quadrennial Conference is expected to elect new office bearers to lead the union for the next four years. Prudence Mutala reporting for Movie TV News in Livingston. Authorities in the Ministry of Agriculture in Southern Province have described the full army worm infestation in the province as not being a threat to food has not been a threat to food security following the dispatch of 13,400 litres of chemicals to all districts. Southern Province Agricultural Coordinator Dr. Max Chombe says the infestation of four army worms on field crops is not as severe as it was last farming season. Meanwhile, Kalomo Acting District Agricultural Coordinator Dominic Mabumba says Kalomo received 1,000 litres of four army worms chemicals that have since distributed to all the 36 agricultural camps in the district. For details, here is a Lawrence Kabutu a report rather from Lawrence Kabutu of Nice in in the Ministry of Agriculture in Southern Province have described the four armyworm infestation in the province as not being a threat to food security following the dispatch of 13,400 litres of chemicals to all districts. Southern Province Agriculture Coordinator Dr. Max Chombe said the infestation of the four armyworms of field crops is not as it was last farming season. We have chemicals in the district okay. uh, which uh, uh, we received uh, in Kalomo, we should have uh, a thousand liters, okay. which is distributed the, to all the camps. And Kalomo District Commissioner Joshua Skaduli had this to say. The New Dawn government had done to our farmers in every sector, they are looking after them in a manner that they don't lose whatever they have. This uh, year, we didn't uh, not expect much of the army worms because of the same that you have said, there was too much rains. So at a time when there's too much rains, we don't much expect to have some problems affecting the, the, the maize. Meanwhile, Kalomo Acting District Coordinator Dominic Mabumba said Kalomo received 1,000 litres of chemicals distributed to all the 36 agricultural camps in the district. We received uh, 1,000 litres of chemicals and uh, the chemicals were distributed to all the 36 camps in the district. Mr. Mavumba further called on seed companies to dress their seed with chemicals that would make the crop not to be susceptible to four armworm attack. I'd like to recommend the seed companies that they should also, all of them should consider treating their seeds with um, the chemical that prevents the four armyworms to attack the crop, especially the maize. Reporting, Lawrence Kabotu in Kalomo. Mufulira District Mayor Tanayeli Kamanga has expressed his desire to turn the district into a city. Mr. Kamanga has since called on Mopani Copper Mines to work hand in hand with government and his office to come up with a crusher plan for road developments in the district. He says the gap between Mufulira Municipal Council and Mopani Copper Mines need to be bridged as this will allow for development in the district. Let's look at Mufulira has got everything. Can I echo the words of the president, Hakahinda Hichilema? He's saying the byproduct of whatever we are going to get from the copper in Ghana will be able to be used in concrete and papers, and that is the way to go. We've got the byproduct, we've got the waste rock. I think as the who are here, Mr. Mwema, the town black. Is overseeing us to see what is it that Mopani can give to the government and the council so that we develop. Of course, he's excited as he's seated there to see and say, let us come up with pressure plans. We've got the West Rock. Why can't we go into the byproduct of the West Rock, which are crushed stones? We are able to see to it that our roads are bad. We want to see to it that we do a lot of buildings. 
The other time that I met the uh, government heads of department here, they got the will and the zeal to start their own single beauty where all government officials will be able to interact than looking at it the way we are started. Manager Corporate Affairs, we are looking unto you. I know that the a gap which has been low, but we want to bridge it down to an extent whereby whatever we want you to do in Ufira, we want you to be part of this development. We've got a passion, I think, as a government for Ufria to change. Remember, in these five years, we want to turn Mufrira into a city. And the people that are here that you see are the people that want to change Mufrira. These are the brains of Mufrira who put everything and I'm sure they will be equal to the task. We just want to follow the pronouncements that are being given by the government who are saying we want to improve Mufrira, we want to rebuild Mufrira. Last but not the least, through the Department of Health, Director Health, we've got the zeal and passion to change Kankoya. I think in the last or first week of this uh, month, we had come into Kankoya and we planted the not less than 300 trees. We want to work with the green economy, the ministry. Zambia has this deployed a Zambia Air Force aircraft to support SADC mission in Mozambique. This follows commit, uh, commitment made by Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Force, Haga Ilejlama, to provide resources towards stabilizing the security situation in Cabo de Gabo region. President Hichlama made the commitment during a SADC extraordinary meeting of heads of state held in January 2022 in Malawi. President Hijlama says maintaining peace in neighboring countries is key for social and economic development of the region. President Hijlama recounts Zambia hosted a number of liberation movements, organizations like the African National Congress, whose headquarters was in Zambia. On 28th January 2022, the Zambia Air Force deployed the C C 27J aircraft into Pemba, Mozambique, under the SADC mission in Mozambique in support of the peacekeeping operation. Since deployment, SAF has provided logistical support to other SADC member states under Samim. The C-27J ZAF aircraft is scheduled to airlift over 50,000 kgs of cargo for the South African Defense Force from Water, Water Clock Air Force Base in Pretoria to Mozambique, among other Samim. We take our break and we'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. Where's Bob? Anyone seen Bob? Has anyone seen Bob? Hmm? Bob? How did you get in there? With my Airtel Money Mastercard. Airtel Money Mastercard? But you don't even have a bank account. How did you get a card? Well, it's not a card, but it works just like one. It's virtual, so no plastic, and it's safer. But what are you doing there? I want to buy Nancy pay the gift, book my flight tickets, renew my Big Click subscription, and order a shipment. For all things online, the Airtel Money Mastercard. It's not a card, but works just like one. Get one on the Airtel Money menu on your phone. On the pitch of life, you've got to choose your game and who you play with. Your people. You get what I mean? Oh, that is so true, Mr. Easy. Because when you need a bit of support, there's the people you can count on. People who are there for you, no matter what. 
we are always here for them. Choose who to play with. With Bird Power, you can touch, message, or call real people round the clock. This advertisement is brought to you by Bird Power. Mr. Nayafika, ya kupende chalo. Aka mwana kanono, no msepe la kuika la chapa mo. Kuribe kumunzi, kuribe muta unikumatero. The Zambia Statistics Agency will this year conduct the census across the country. The census aims to count people in households, rural and urban, hospitals, military, police and correctional facilities. This numbering will extend to hotels, farms, as well as high-density areas with different families sharing a house and those in transitory locations. Every person in the country matters and should be counted because the census will benefit all from migrants, refugees and street children, homeless people, the young and the old people, as well as persons with disabilities. Everyone counts. This message is brought to you by the Zambia Statistics Agency. Travel to and from South Africa with Ruan Air as we offer 20% off discount for flights. Sales period between 25th January to 28th February. Buy your tickets now through Ruan Air. Fly the dream of Africa. Welcome back. Parliament has resumed sitting after adjourning on 21st December 2021 when the House approved the national budget. The House on Tuesday will come to the, to the House a new member of Parliament for Kawata constituency, Andrew Tayangwa, who emerged victorious in the Kawata by election. Can we have some order, silence? The Honorable Minister of Mines and Minerals Development. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Question number 110. Question A says, what the government policy on shareholding structure between Zambia and foreign investment investors in the mining sector is whether there are any plans to promote women participation into mining if so what what the plans are madam speaker the following is a government policy on shareholding structure between zambian and foreign investors in the mining sector Number one, small-scale mining. A company undertaking small-scale mining must have a minimum of 5% of its shares owned by Zambians. Number two, large-scale mining. There is no specific policy governing the shareholding structure between Zambians and foreign investors for large-scale mines. However, government owns between 10 to 100% shares in the mines which were previously owned by ZCCMIH and not in the new mines. Madam Speaker, I want to emphasize that the Ministry is reviewing the min Mineral Resources Development Policy and is considering enhancing the framework that governs the shareholding of government in the mines. And this will be done in consultation but Ellen Makinishi has bemoaned the ever-growing digital divide in the country that has left some sections of the society behind. Ms. Makinishi says despite the recent improvements in Zambia's digital environment, there is need to double efforts to ensure that every Zambian citizen is digitally included. Speaking in an interview with Movie TV News, she notes that science, technology and innovation have become significant enablers and drivers of economic and social well-being of people. She adds improving access to digital technology and its effective use in Zambia can open pathways to increasing productivity and market access for the private sector. President Haga Indejina Masoni, the new chairperson for of the service 
Civil Service Commission, Peter Mumba. Speaking at the function, the head of state advised Mr. Mumba to use the practical experience he aimed in his exemplary tour of duty as a civil senior civil servant, rather, to uplift the standards and ethnics of the civil service so that the nation is stirred in the right direction. President Hijama further urged Mr. Mumba to apply quality, uh, rather equality and fairness, while ensuring that highest levels of discipline are upheld in the civil service. Mr. Mumba comes in with a wealth of experience, including many years of in impeccable service as permanent secretary of home affairs, energy, as well as tourism and arts. Namuswa, former Copper Belt Deputy Commissioner, has been taken to court for the 2016 shooting of a UPND cadre in his buttocks during a scuffle at the Lusaka High Court. 49-year-old Mr. Namuswa, a police officer of plot number 647, Obama, Lusaka, is facing a charge of cautious, grievous harm with intent to maim, disfigure, or disable. It is alleged that Namuswa on 5th 15th December 2016 with intent to maim, disfigure or dissemble grievously harmed Peter Masani. Mr. Na, Mr. Namuswa, who was aimed with, uh, armed rather, with a pistol shoot, uh, shot Masani in the process. Masani still moves with a bullet in his buttocks as doctors at the investigation hospital failed to extract it. According to Masani, the doctors who attended to him indicated that he would... He, Beg your pardon. He would be crippled as his left leg would not function after the operation and that he was likely to suffer from cancer. Mr. Amoso appeared before Magistrate Sheila Mwini and had the charge explained to him that he could not take plea as the offence is only tried by the High Court. Kama Mutua Ward Councillor in Mufumboi District, Kelly's Kalaunda, has appealed to government to consider working on the damaged footbridge in the area. Mr. Kalaunda says the footbridge has been washed away by heavy rains and, in, and the sport is a danger to the villagers. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, my full name is Kalaunda Kelly's, uh, the Ward Councillor for Kamabuta Ward. Actually, we are here uh, to let the government know that uh, uh, we are facing so many challenges and one of the challenges is uh, the bridge that has been washed away by the heavy pour rains uh, in Kalambu zone of Ka Only bridge that people use in Kamabuta Ward and uh, people come from very far, from all those farms that are uh, at the far end. Kamano, Kamika, Kamikanga, uh, to mention but a few. There are so many farmers there, and we have so many farmers. So we are appealing to the local government to make sure that this bridge is worked on. Uh, actually, I uh, uh, talked to the I talked to the uh, director of works, the engineering at the Mfumbe Town Council, who emphasized us to say no, the bridge will be worked on. And not only that, as we may be aware that uh, we are in the rain season. The rain season, uh, there are so many houses that have collapsed due to heavy rains. So far, we have recorded 38 houses that uh, has, has been collapsed in Kamabuta Ward. So we want, uh, through the Department of DMMU, to make sure that uh, we work together and we make sure that we help these uh, people that have, uh, are affected with the collapsing of the, their houses. We take a set of commercials, and that is our last for this particular prime time news. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Where's Bob? Anyone seen Bob? Has anyone seen Bob? Hmm? Bob? Bob! Bob! Over here! Where? Over here! How did you get in there? With my Airtel Money Mastercard. Airtel Money Mastercard? 
But you don't even have a bank account. How did you get a card? Well, it's not a card, but it works just like one. It's virtual, so no plastic, and it's safer. But what are you doing there? I want to buy Nancy Pet the gift, book my flight tickets, renew my Big Click subscription, and order a shipment. For all things online, the Airtel Money MasterCard. It's not a card, but works just like one. Get one on the Airtel Money menu on your phone. As COVID-19 cases keep rising, many business entities are affected and their revenue keeps going down. But together, we can fight COVID-19. Rumpi Enterprises provides you and your organization the safety you require in these hard times of the COVID-19 pandemic by using effective disinfectants procedures such as knockdown and residual disinfecting that helps prevent and get rid of COVID-19. We do knockdown and residual disinfecting procedures for homes, offices, hospitals, churches, and many more. Protect yourself and the people around you and get your business running with our powerful trusted disinfectants. Call Rumpy Enterprises on 0955-767835 or 0955-992230 or come to the third floor, room 3, Tazara House, corner of Dedan Kimati and Independence Avenue. Follow us on Facebook, Rumpy Enterprises Limited. Always remember to observe the COVID-19 guidelines. Mask up, sanitize, social distancing and staying up. Welcome back with the rest of the news. Ghana's parliament has invited the captain of the national team, Andre Morgan Ayel, into their chamber to answer some questions concerning their abysmal display as they just ended AFCON. The parliament of Ghana has set 16th, 17th and 18th February 2021, 2022 rather, to commence formal investigations into the abysmal performance of the Blacksters in their ex ex disappointing exit from AFCON 2021. The Parliamentary Committee will sit at the East Wing Conference Room, Job 600, and key stakeholders such as Ministry of Youth and Sports, National Sports and Authority, and GFA has received invitations to help in the investigations. Also, Captain Andre Ayel will appear before the investigation team to answer questions. That is what we had for you this evening on the Prime Time News. Let's look at the headlining stories once again. Zesco implements spatial removal of subsidies as connection fees go up. Sleepy Samsa forced to bed as entire management is dissolved. Anti-corruption commission pounces on Boma and Lusambo's wife over properties worth 7 million kwacha. DEC discloses more money laundered after 2021 pause. My name is Chola Chisha. Thank you so much for watching the primetime news this evening. We still have our next news update coming up at 21.15. Stay tuned to your channel of choice. Good evening.